Hello there, my name is Valerie White Williams and I'm a voice teacher and a vocal coach for Vocal Splendor Studios. Today I'm doing another reaction video and this time I'm back to reacting to Festa Zongers and I'm reacting to Karsu performing Hijo de la Luna on Besta Zangers. Let's have a listen. It's interesting. I did do some research on this because I didn't want to butcher the title. And I understand that I think it's Belle who was there. This song is about a gypsy woman. I didn't want to get too much into it, but it's just very compelling. Look at her. I, I love this show because so much passion in the singers and the people in the hot seat. It's so emotional. <laughs> She looks like a gypsy there. She's got such a huge voice, the rich tone. She is so compelling. I think she was the, the secret star that popped out of this season. I mean, everybody's great, but she, many people have commented that Karsu is just blows their mind. And she sings in Turkish. She probably has a huge Turkish following. She's also Dutch. And here she's singing in Spanish, and it's pretty, pretty impressive. She is so animated. She is so in to her songs, meaning she is taking it on in a very deep way. And I'm assuming this is in her language too, but so musical too. She uses a lot of what we call dynamics, soft and louds, because the song is kind of one, two, three, one, two, three. And so the arrangement and the dynamics really make it compelling. And she's totally in control of her voice. She can, she's never ever goes over the top in a way that is too much. It's very here with the lyrics and the storytelling. <laughs> Oh, 
porque ni más te debo eras. Y ese niño llora, me muera la luna para ser orgullosa. A compelling song. I only wish I could understand all the lyrics, but that's okay because she is such a storyteller. She inhabits her songs in a very deep level and she just like almost puts herself behind the song, I mean herself, and allowing to express the song through her, really. It's like it's almost like channeling or something. And so, and she has such a gorgeous voice. She has that really rich low voice and she can go up to her high belt, but it never feels like it's out of control, that it's too intense. And the thing too is that she she's always present. She's always present there. Now she has this round face or roundish face. And I've always found the singers that have a lot of broad in their face have lots of tone color, lots of richness. I don't have that. I have the long chin face. You know, I have a different voice type than her, but her richness is full and she has a lot to work with with her voice. And then she uses her voice as a tool to communicate. And this is a lot of Spanish. I was blown away. It's I I'm just barely learning Spanish. I'm not good at it. It's one of my bottom languages. But to go through a song like that, to tell a huge story about a gypsy woman is a lot. Now, I did recognize the word mujer. <laughs> I always like, there's one word I know. But she, this is a lot of lyrics. Now, I was an opera singer. I studied voice in college and we studied opera and I've sung a lot of opera. and. It's hard to sing in a language that's not really your own. And you have to actually write down what the words mean and you have to like make sure it's correctly pronounced because everybody who are native speakers will, will know it's wrong. And it's, it's challenging. It's really challenging. Now, maybe she speaks Spanish, but I, I, I don't know. It's pretty impressive. But here's the deal. A lot of Europeans speak multiple languages and I'm working on my multiple languages. I'm kind of a language nerd myself, but I don't feel really prolific in any of them except perhaps Swedish and German because that's where I had the most experience, French and some Italian, because that's what us voice teachers do. We had to learn to sing, at least pretend to sing in those foreign languages, Swedish because of my family's from Sweden. But she is so compelling. And the other thing about her is that she really uses her body in a way that feels very comfortable. Because I know that was something for me. I always felt really awkward because I have really long arms and legs. And I felt like I will feel like a windmill. But she uses her hands to create the storytelling. And it doesn't seem too much, but it just feels that passion in the arms. So that's what you want. You want to stay in that performance mode, telling the story, and then if the arms feel like they need to enunciate some lyrics, then then the arms going to go that. It's not really choreographed. You know, people do that sometimes and always looks kind of fake, but it's more from the emotion part. And then the other part, I mean, this band I love. I think the Mark Sissel band, I'm afraid that's not his first name, but I'm so impressed with the band. They are top notch. And I really love the break, what was just the vocals. Ooh, ooh, that was really cool because the, the melody is somewhat repetitive. It's repetitive. And the way you make it interesting is you do different stylizing behind it and different instruments and a little Spanish guitar and the vocals by themselves. And so it, it builds with that song. And she, and she looked gorgeous, of course, perfect outfit. It was wonderful. So yes, so if you love Carsu as much as I do, make sure you subscribe, click on the bell, you best of Zongers fans, and then let me know what other Carsu songs I should do. Because she's become a huge favorite of mine 
and as well, I'm sure, as many other people. So let me know. And I do want to let you know that if you're interested in some lessons, I have a few spots open for people who want to take a lesson or two or maybe more. So let me know. Everything is below in the description. And last of all, I want to let you know of my two free passion projects on Facebook. The first is called Creative Soul Alignment, and it's for people that are interested in spirituality and creativity. Because here's the deal. When we are creating, we are also using our spirituality because we are here to create. That's what we're here to do. And we're here to create a world that works for everybody without creepy overlords telling us what to do. Because that's what we got going on now and it's not gonna be here forever because the earth is a gorgeous place and we need to visualize a world that works for everybody. So once we all do that, once we're all on board with that, it's going to change. And the other group is called YouTube Success Strategies, and that's where I'm teaching people how to succeed on YouTube. All right, so let me know, you Best of Zingers fans, and yeah, I look forward to doing more. I'm really behind with my watching, but I'm going to get back to it. All right, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.